guys, it's Lindsay here with Gym Raw. I have a triple Pilates workout for you today. So it will be five minutes of cardio, followed by 30 minutes of Pilates with some weights if you have them, light weights, and then 10 minutes of yoga to finish it all off. So if you are ready, we'll get started with some marching. We're gonna warm up the body. These will be your modifications for your cardio section. If when we get into some jumping, it's a little bit too much on your knees, please come back to this marching. Start to pump those arms, draw your navel in towards your spine. Drive your knees up nice and high to your chest. Using your low belly muscles to pull your knees up a little bit higher. Start to pump those arms a little bit harder. Good, warming the body up, and then we'll take it up a little bit more on our next round. So we'll be here for about 10 more seconds. We'll do 30 seconds of a standing cardio move, and we'll move into 30 seconds of a move in a plank. Keeping your core tight in both of those positions. Okay, let's take it down to the floor. We're gonna start with a plank for our first round. Fingers are spread wide, pushing the ground away from you, keeping your chest lifted, making sure that your hips are not drooping down. That's our number one here. Keep your hips up in line with your chest. Legs are strong just as much as the upper body. We don't want soft knees. We want those legs fully extended, pushing through those heels, making sure your ribs are drawing in and up towards your spine. Five more seconds and then we're taking it up a notch. Last three. Two and one, either into that marching or let's bring it up into those high knees. Now that heart rate's gonna start to come up, so make sure you're breathing. I'm gonna put in the effort, so I want you to put in the effort as well. You're already here. They say 80% is just showing up, so you've already showed up. Might as well put in that extra little um. Start to really pump those arms, lift those knees up into your chest. Make sure that core is tight. Let's go last 10 seconds. We're taking it to the mat. Modification is that plank or bring it into those mountain climbers. Here we go, let's hit the mat. Fingers spread wide, nice tight core, and let's run those knees into our chest. Now as you're running your knees into your chest, make sure your hips are not dipping down. Rather, they're staying lifted up away from the floor. Start to pick that pace up. Make sure your breath is flowing in and out. Last 10 seconds, let's push it up a notch. Keep smiling. It's just the start. Last three, two, and one. Back to the top, opposite knee to elbow. Crunching through the waist. If you're more advanced, let's pick it up into a jump. A little jump through center. Crunching into your abdominals, twisting through your core. Exhale, knee to elbow, inhale, through the center. Good, okay guys, just 15 more seconds. Good, keep it on going. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's hit the mat. Mountain climbers, same knee, same elbow. Modification, no jump. If you're advancing, let's add a little hop in between. Keep that low belly lifted. Pushing the ground away from you. Staying strong in your upper body. Making sure your chest is not slumping down towards the floor. Halfway there, guys. Keep that heart rate up. Keep running those knees to the same elbow. Keep them nice and high. Try to hit high up on your arm rather than low towards the forearm. Good, stay with me, eight more. Good, keep running it out. Four, three, two, one. Taking it back to standing. We're gonna climb our rope. If you would like to take it up a notch, you're gonna bring those knees into your chest. Keep your chest lifted. Drive your knees up a bit higher. Spring off the floor. This is our cardio portion. Lucky you, it's only five minutes today. Knowing that, give me all you got. Keep driving those knees up towards the sky. Taking it to the mat in five. And let's hit the mat. Finding your plank, you'll hop your same foot outside your same hand. Step it back to your mountain climber. Same foot outside your same hand and step it back. Add a little hop 
if you're more advanced. Maybe just your heel touches outside of your hand. Good, pushing through it. Just cause it's five minutes doesn't mean it's easy. Good, getting your knee all the way up as high as you can towards the front of that mat. Last three, two, and one. Last round here, guys. Bring it back up, hands will come behind the head. Big inhale, start to run those knees up into your belly. I'm working hard, I'm out of breath, I hope you are too. Good, about a third of the way there. Keep that chest lifted, sternum is open, thighs are pumping up to the ceiling. Give me a big smile, let's run it out, 15 to go. Drive those knees to the ceiling. Keep that belly tight, last 10. Push through it. Five, four, three, two, one. Give yourself a hand, that was not easy, that was hard. So, we are done with cardio. Good news, but let's grab those weights. Moving into a little Pilates. Pilates V, heels together, toes and knees apart, squeeze your inner thighs to touch. Turn your wrists forward, nice tall collarbone. Exhale, bicep curl as you lift your heels up. Inhale to lower down. Letting that heart rate come down. I know mine's cruising, so I'm sure yours is too. Not so easy to work out and talk at the same time, huh? Right, as you're lifting and lowering your heels, every time you lower your heels back down. You're trying to get your heels to touch at the bottom. Maintaining that inner thigh connection the whole time. If it's hard for you to do the mind-muscle connection of inner thigh squeezing together, just think of pushing your legs into each other. And you'll start to feel something in the middle of your legs. That's the inner thighs. The navel is lifted up to the chest. Ah, heart rate is coming down a little bit. But as you're curling your arms in, actively flex your biceps. Creating a contraction in your arm, not just from the weight of the dumbbells, but from actually squeezing the muscle. We'll take this parallel. Toes face forward, wrists face your waist. Exhale, curl it up. Inhale, lower it down. And really hitting those calves in your biceps to start us off. Now all of our Pilates exercises today, I took from our normal reformer repertoire, and I converted them to mat exercises. So if you are a regular Pilates enthusiast, things might seem a little bit familiar. Then make sure your shoulder blades are drawing towards the spine, keeping the front of the chest wide. Last one here, now you'll turn your wrists out, you'll turn your toes and knees in, and then exhale, lift it up, inhale, lower it down. We're internally rotating our legs, Moving all the way from the top of the thigh, spinning our leg bones in our sockets so they face inward. And then our arms are externally rotating, which is just facilitating more of an open chest because our posture nowadays isn't too grand. So stay nice and upright. And let's go for about 10 more. Those calves should be alive and well. Good. Heart rate has recovered. Last three. Remember, at any time during this, if you need to grab water, please do. But try to hop right back in as quick as you can. Final one. Take it to that Pilates V. Squeeze your inner thighs and your glutes on your inhale. Hug your moon. Straighten your legs. Open your arms to a semicircle. Staying nice and tall in the chest. So a little bit different than a squat. On a squat, your chest would naturally hinge forward. In this position, I want to keep my chest right above my hips. 
I'm lengthening my tailbone towards my heels, creating a long low back. So I make, I'm keeping the back bend out of my back, getting rid of that natural lumbar curve. Shoulders are anchored down away from the ears, especially as the arms lift up. This motion right here is when they'll want to lift. Try to keep them anchored, drop those guides down. Belly button is pulling to the spine and my ribs are narrowing. They're wrapping around my spine as well. Last two and final one. Take your arms to a big circle. Step your feet to a wide second position, toes and knees turned out. On your inhale, bend your knees wide. On your exhale, stand tall, squeeze your glutes. Make sure your spine is staying completely upright. You're pushing through your feet, lengthening through your thighs and squeezing your glutes as you stand. As my knees bend, my chest is not hinging forward. I'm keeping it right over my pelvis. Okay, let's go four more here for four. And three. Isometrically squeezing the heels inwards towards each other. Last two. Final one, let's stay nice and low. Press your knees back in space so the inner arches of your feet lift. Chest is tall. On your exhale, twist your upper body to the right. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, rotate left. Inhale, back to center. As you twist right, make sure your left hip stays still. Inhale, center. As you twist left, make sure your right hip pulls back in space. All of the rotation will be around the waist around those bottom ribs, the narrowest part of your belly, as where we're trying to find that twist from. Everything below is staying still. So as you twist, make sure your right knee does not come forward. Keep that guy pressing back in space. Let's add a little pulse to this. As you twist, twist further, further, and further. Inhale to center. Exhale to twist for three, two, one. Inhale, center. Exhale, rotate through the belly. Pulse for three, two, one. Inhale, center. The weight should stay in the center of your chest the whole time. If you find that you're just turning your arms and your chest, it might look more like this. Turn your whole upper back with you to find that rotation. You should really be feeling this in the shoulders and the core. Last one, inhale through center. One more each side. And exhale, exhale. Exhale, inhale to center. We'll open those arms wide as we stand up. You'll hug your tree, squeeze your glutes. Inhale to open those arms. Keeping the front of the chest wide and a smile on your face. Stick with me. As you're straightening your legs, you're drawing up through your kneecaps, firming your thighs back into your hamstrings. And we'll go for our last four and three. Final two. Last one, sit it down nice and low. Stretch your arms out to a T, taking it to our saw. On your exhale, turn to your right, dive forward, round your spine like an angry cat. Inhale, stack your spine, sit tall. Exhale, twist left, dive forward with your hand, pull back with your navel. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, twist, C curve, ribs into your back body. Inhale, stretch, maybe sink a little lower for me. Exhale as you rotate, core pulls into the spine. Inhale, lift, let's add those pulses. As you pulse, you're pulling your belly further and further into your back. Inhale through center, exhale for three. Ha. Exhale like you're fogging a mirror. That's our Pilates breathing here. Reach further forward with your hand, pull further back with your belly. Inhale, lift tall. Exhale, twist, reach further further and further. Bring those arms up, push them together, lift your right heel up, pulse those legs down. Make sure your thighs are staying wide here. Knees should be back over the second or third toe. The feet that are planted on that floor, you should be able to see your big toe here. Take a big inhale and a big exhale. Sink low, drop that right heel, lift that left heel up and let's pulse down into it. My legs are starting to shake right now. I'm sure yours are too. That is awesome though. Think about all the work you've just put in. Now you're getting to that fatigue point. Oop, don't fall over. And that's really what you want. You want to push yourself a little harder than you did last time. If you do the same things each time, you're not going to get any stronger. 
You don't want to hit that plateau. Lower that left heel down. Now both heels lift, both heels lower. If you need a modify, you'll just do one heel. Balance is definitely being challenged here. So are those leg muscles. So maybe squat it down a little lower. Last two. Final one. Lift those heels up. Lower those heels down and flare those knees back. Eight, seven, sink into it. Six, five, four, squeeze your glutes. Pelvis is scooping forward for three, two, and one. Both heels lift up, pulse it down. Stay upright in that spine. See if you can get your hips as low as your knees. Distribute your weight evenly on all knuckles of each toe. Last three, and two. Add one, sink into it, lower those heels. Squeeze your glutes, stand up. That was amazing, good work. Okay, we'll be stepping those feet in parallel and we'll take the weights behind our back. Press the weights into each other, make a diamond with your pointer finger and your thumb. On your exhale, straighten your arms to the ceiling, squeezing your triceps. Inhale to bend your elbows. Exhale to lengthen, squeeze at the top. Inhale to bend. Every time you straighten your arms, you'll want to make sure that you're squeezing the triceps to make sure that those back of the arm muscles are being engaged. But a little recovery for that heart rate. Good. Lengthen, squeeze, and gently release. Spine is tall. Keep your skull stacked over the rest of your spine. And make sure your shoulders are staying plugged into your back. Right, let's go for five more. And last four. And actively push the weights into each other. That'll give you a little extra something. Final two. And last one here. Straighten those arms all the way up and then gently lower them down. Feet are hips distance apart. Arms will reach forward, wrists will face up. On your inhale, you'll go for a bicep curl. Exhale, sit your hips back into a squat. Inhale, drive through your heels, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, lengthen those arms. Curl the arms in. Sit low in your squat. Drive through your heels, reach your arms forward. Now, as you're doing this, send your butt back rather than sending your knees forward. Sit your hips down into that chair, making sure we protect those knees. We're not really trying to bend at the knees. What we're doing is we're bending at the hips, or hinging at the hips. If we were to bend at the knees per se, we'd be sending our knees forward, and we'd be putting a lot of pressure on our knee joints. And that's not really our goal here. We're trying to build up that butt. We're not trying to injure our knees. That is not the goal. Every time you stand up, make sure you actively squeeze your butt. If you just do this squat without any engagement of your glutes, you'll probably not get as much out of it either. Good, so like there is a pencil in between your butt cheeks. Squeeze it as you stand up. That's really what it feels like. Let's go four more, for four. Breathing with the movement, last three. And final two. You know we gotta burn it out, last one. Sit into it, pulse those legs down, pulse those arms up. Can you find a 90 degree bend? Can you sit a little lower? Get your bum down, stick it in line with those knees, weight in the heels, light in the toes. Stick with me, six, five, push through it, four. Shoulders anchored for three, belly button tight for two, six, sit down, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome job, okay. Feet will stay in the same position. Hips will go slightly back, long spine. Arms come into a circle. On your exhale, open your arms, squeeze your shoulder blades. Inhale to release. Exhale here. Inhale to release. Collarbones are wide. We're working our upper, upper back muscles. So as you pull your arms back, it's not a row, bending of the elbows. The arms will stay in the same shape. It's our shoulder blades and our lat muscles narrowing on our back. They're hugging towards the spine. And exhale as you pull back. Inhale through center. And let's find six more. Long spine, tight core. Five. Four. 
three, last two, final one, hold it back, pulse it back, eight, seven, six, five, shoulders, anchors, wide collarbone, last three, two, and one, arms come forward, got a little sweat, got to wipe that off, feet will come into a Pilates V, hug those inner thighs together, and then take your arms into that circle, bend those elbows into your chest. Reach your left leg behind you, point your toe, turn your left knee out, the knee is bent. On your exhale, you'll lift the leg up, squeezing your outer hip. Inhale, tap the foot to the mat. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower. Now notice, when I'm lifting my leg up, the whole leg is moving. So all the way from the top of the hip, I'm lifting the leg. Rather than my shin pushing back, press back with your outer left thigh. That will make a difference if that's not what you're doing to start. But you should feel a little pinch in the side of your left butt cheek. If you feel that, then you're definitely doing it right. Stand tall in your supporting leg. That guy's still getting a lot of work as well. Keep that lift of your upper back out of your lower back. Resist leaning or sinking down into your pelvis. Sinking down into your supporting hip. No grocery store hips. Stand tall. Adding on here, you'll lift the leg up. Pulse it up for three, two, one. Inhale, tap it to the mat. Exhale to lift, pulse for three, two, one, inhale to lower. As you lift, lift it higher, 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 and then tap it down. Working a bit of balance here too, so keep those core tight, Woo! and make sure those stabilizers and your body are firing, they're getting their workout. Okay, right, let's go four more. Squeeze up and up, you're pinching into the side of that left hip, last three. Okay. Final two, pulse it up for three, two, one, inhale, step it down, final one, lift that guy up, pulse it out, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, keep that knee externally rotating, hoarding to that side wall, for four, three, two, and one, shake that out, second leg, stand nice and tall, lift your navel up, turn your right knee out this time, press that right knee back in space. It's an exhale to lift and an inhale to lower. Now what's also really important in this position is that when you lift your leg up, you're not flying it back and arching into your low back. You can put your hand behind your low back just to check. There should be no movement in your low back. Woo! I almost fell over, but it's all good. We're all working out here together. Good. Got a little carried away. On your exhale, you'll lift. Inhale, you'll lower. Right, check that you're lifting out of your supporting leg. Left thigh is drawing up towards your left hip bone. Squeeze your quad. Right, sternum is tall. And we're breathing through the burn. Right, squeeze into that outer right glute as you lift your leg up. Okay, let's add those pulses. Lift it up. Pulse for three, two, one, tap the mat. Exhale, lift, pulse for three, two, one, tap the mat. Getting a full body workout right here. Everything is working. Arms, navel, back, legs. All right, pulsing it up for three, two, one, and lower down. Every time you pulse that leg, squeeze your tush. Pinch into that glute. Good, let's do four more for four. And final three. The last two, you know what we're doing on our last one. We've got 10 here, inhale, tap it down, pulse it up higher and higher, everything you got. Eight, seven, six, five, four, squeeze your butt, push your knee back, three, two, and one. Awesome job, now let's hit those triceps. We'll turn to the side of our mat, tall chest when we go forward. Modification will be to stay here with both legs on the ground. If you'd like to advance a little bit, you'll take your right leg, send it straight back behind you, wrist face the ceiling, collarbone is wide, lean forward, find your balance, pulse your arms up. Squeezing into those triceps, flexing into your right foot, the whole leg is lifted. Good, fully extend your arms, make sure your elbows are not bending here. Really reach and extend. Maybe you can come a little bit parallel, bringing your chest in line with your back leg. 
draw your upper traps out of your ears. Make sure those shoulders are not crouching up. Draw them down the spine. Good. This is a challenging move for me. We're definitely working that balance. Remember, anytime you can put both feet down, good. Pulse those arms up. Get them high to the ceiling. And let's switch legs. Right foot down. Left leg will sweep back behind you. Navel engage and then pulse those arms to the ceiling. Wrist face the sky as if your fingers are trying to touch your left heel behind you. Square your pelvis so both hips face the floor. Good. Stay long in the neck. Let's go 10 more guys. 10. A little bit higher each time. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Keep those arms up. Hold them there. Both feet down. Squeeze your shoulders and pulse it up. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Work for the burn. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome work. Good news. The rest of our Pilates will be on the mat. You'll only need one weight, so you can put your other dumbbell aside. I hope everybody is feeling good. Moving into some abdominal exercises. Plant your feet hips distance apart on the mat. Both of your hands will hold onto the dumbbell. On your exhale, curl your chest up. Shoulders are down. With your arms, we'll draw a circle around your legs. Exhale to curl up. Inhale to lower down. Good, circling to the right. Lift center. Inhale to lower back. Now all of this circular mo motion is happening in my upper body. So if your legs are looking like this, stabilize your hips, press your hips into the ground so that your pelvis is not rocking around. Let's reverse that, whoop. And we're here for 10. Lifting a little bit higher, curling your chest over your ribs, sinking your navel into your back body. Good. The last five. Using that breath to get you through this. Very important. If you're turning red because you're not breathing, no bueno. Last one. Come to center. Pulse it up. Ten. Nine. As you pulse forward with the chest, pull back with the core. Eight. Seven. Six. C curve that spine. Last five. Four, three, two, one. Reach for it, reach for it, and roll it down. Okay, resting your head on the mat. Weight will go into the right hand. Extend both of your legs straight up to the ceiling. On your inhale, you'll lower your left leg down and open your right arm out to the right. Exhale, lift back to center. As you open your right arm to the right, move with control. This exercise is challenging your left oblique, the side of the body that the leg is lowering. Make sure that the left back of your body is staying anchored to the mat. Good, it's an inhale to lower and an exhale to lift. Back of your left shoulder, left back ribs, left tush, all staying planted. If you're doing this exercise and you feel like you're drifting over to the right, move slower. This one is about the control factor of Pilates. Might not feel like a huge burn at first. We're challenging those stabilizers. Okay. Ribs are lacing in the front of the body. Make sure there's no back bending happening. Sinking that spine into the mat. Let's switch sides. Weight goes into the left hand. Soft bend of that elbow, lower your right leg down, open your left arm to the left, exhale, lift to center. Inhale to lower down, exhale to return to center. Now since I'm on this side, you'll see better as I lower down, I wanna not lose contact with the right side of my body on the floor. As that arm opens to the left, it will challenge me to do so. Sinking the back of my right shoulder, the back of my ribs, and the back of my posterior right hip into the ground, working my core muscles, my right oblique. 
Good, it's an inhale to lower and an exhale to lift. Working to keep your back ribs heavy the whole time and your lumbar spine heavy into the mat, that natural low back arch that we all have or that most of us have. We're trying to keep that into the floor. Okay, let's go for about four more here for four. And final three. Good, and then our last two. Inhale to lower. And exhale to lift. Bend your knees to tabletop. Glue your inner thighs together. Both hands on the dumbbell. Bend your elbows. On your inhale, you'll reach your legs to 45. Extend your arms overhead. Exhale, bend your elbows and your knees. As your legs extend away from you, no arching in that low back. Drive your lower back muscles into the floor by engaging your core. Good. Pull and drive that belly button into the mat beneath you. As my arms extend overhead, my shoulders are actively drawing in the opposite direction. Stay connected with that breath. Inhale, stretch apart. Exhale, bend. Be more conscious about the alignment than about the movement itself of the arms and the legs extending. By focusing and pushing that low back and tightening your core into the mat, you'll feel a lot more than just the degree of the legs, how low you get them. But if you need to modify here, send the arms and legs a little bit higher, like so. Otherwise, stay with me. Five more for five. And four. As the legs go out, sink the navel to the mat. Final two, guys. Last one, everything extends away and we're going big scissor kicks, keeping the stability of your hips. The further overhead your arms, the more intense it will be on that core work. Taking it to small scissor kicks. Maybe you can take it really low to the mat. Beginner, intermediate, Advance, get those legs all the way down. Drive your low back into the mat. Heavy your core muscles into the floor. Kick, 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 kick. Turn your legs out. Squeeze those inner thighs. Keep those arms down. Good, now start to click your heels together. Beat your heels. Click, click, click. Find those inner thighs. You will definitely feel those inner thighs here. And let's go 10, nine, eight, a little quicker. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lift it up, legs are straight and parallel, arms to the ceiling. On your inhale, arms and legs separate. Exhale, lift everything back up to the sky. Try to fully extend the legs by squeezing your quads. Engage your quad muscles here. Think of a dancer, how they fully extend. They reach through the toes, but not only are they just reaching through the toes, these muscles right here are firing. These guys are squeezing to the bone. Good. If you need to modify this, you can bend your knees or you can just shrink the range of motion. Advance, intensify that range of motion. Make it bigger, but still move with intelligence. Make sure that that low back is not arching. As the legs move down towards the floor, feel like you're pushing something really heavy away from you. Make it challenging for yourself. Like your limbs are moving through the pool or through something sticky like peanut butter. Let's find four more here, guys. Last four. Good. Challenging those core muscles wherever you're at. Last three. Back ribs heavy, low spine heavy. Final two. Last one. We're finishing here with a low hold. Arms overhead, legs extended to your lowest point. Make sure your low back is working. Stick with me for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful work, guys. And that concludes the Pilates part of our exercise. So we'll be moving into some yoga.
we'll start with our legs crossed. I thought I would throw in a little bit of an arm balance variation, which could be fun. If you need help with this, you can place books under your hands to help lift you up. Otherwise, you'll plant your hands on the ground. All of the muscles that we just worked in that belly, pull them in, push down into your hands, lift your butt up, and then maybe you can float your feet up as well. Keep your core engaged, round your spine like crazy, sit your hips down, nice work. Extend your right leg straight out in front of you with a flex foot. Left leg will be bent in a half butterfly position, sole of the foot into the right inner thigh. Janush your shasana. Inhale, sit nice and tall, grow the spine. On your exhale, dive forward, grabbing your shin or your foot. Now what we're gonna try to work here today is that we're not rounding our back, we're rather extending the spine. So we're getting rid of any curvature in the low back. Reaching the chest towards the toes and lengthening the tailbone out behind us. Coming out of this position where we all are kind of days, rounded forward in our seats at our desk or in our car, we're trying to keep the length of our spine. If you're finding that you can maintain this length here, you can start to fold forward. But if this is challenging, keep pulling your chest through your arms. And then once you get there, you'll start to fold over your leg, drawing your nose towards your knee. Even once you fold in and you've gotten pretty deep into this stretch, work the length of the spine, pull the chest towards the toes. If you're more advanced, you can walk those fingers all the way out in front of you. Actively engage your thigh, push it down into the floor. Very active stretching here, not passive whatsoever. Take one more inhale, lengthen the back and then on your exhale, roll it up. Cross those legs, we'll try that arm balance again. Press your hands into the ground, pull your low belly in like crazy. Exhale, fire up those arms, lift your feet up. This time, switch the feet. And then lower the hips down. This time, extending that left leg, flex your foot. Right sole of the foot into the left inner thigh. Press your feet and your inner thigh into each other. Inhale, lift the spine, get tall. And then on your exhale, fold it forward stretching your spine over your leg. Aiming your chest towards your toes as if you're doing a little bit of a back bend in the upper back. Pressing your right knee towards the floor, anchoring your hips to the mat, and then growing your waist out of your pelvis. If you feel like you're super rounded in this position, you can prop yourself up on, your, on some pillows and that will definitely help give you a better hamstring stretch. Good, if you'd like to take it a little bit deeper, you'll start to crawl those fingers forward. Grip the mat with your fingertips and then pull your chest forward. Go for the length of the spine. It will lend itself to a better hamstring stretch for sure. If you're finding that you have that length, you'll start to fold into it. Okay, taking those inhales where you need them. And even though this might be uncomfortable, Try to breathe through it. Might just be as, just as hard as the cardio portion. Good. Softening the shoulders into the back. Walking yourself out a little bit deeper. And then on your exhale, you'll roll it back in. Let's cross those legs. Press down into your hands. Tighten your core. Lift your legs up. Switch the cross of the feet. Shoot them out straight. And then take it down. Flex your feet. Get really tall in your low back. If you have problems with sitting up tall, fingertips to the mat, push the ground away from you. Use your arms to help you lift your spine. Flex your feet and firmly press your thighs into the ground. This could be where you stay for your hamstring stretch. And don't forget, you could have that pillow underneath your butt to help that lift. Now, if you're a little bit more flexible, keep the lift of your back, release your hands, inhale, grow tall through the spine, use your core muscles, and then start to hinge forward from your back. Keep extending the middle spine so that it does not round. Grab anywhere on your legs, hold on, maybe even your feet, and then pull your chest forward. It's also totally fine to grab the sides of your thighs. Bend your elbows, draw yourself into the stretch. Use the strength of your arms to assist here. Pull yourself in with those arms. You'll get a much deeper experience. Good. Now as you start to take it up a notch, Climb those arms a little lower, still using those arms to help you, and then folding your body into your legs. Once we've gotten deeper into this, we're still working the length of our waist. 
as if someone's got their hands on my waist from the front of me and is pulling me towards my feet. I'm trying to create that work here. So it's by no means just resting into this and really working the pose. I right, take one more breath here in Paschimottanasana. Take that inhale, grow a little taller through your back. Exhale, dig your hamstrings into the floor. And then gently release, roll it all the way up. Cross those legs. Anchor into your belly. Exhale, push the ground away from you. Switch those legs. And then take a seat. Extend your right leg forward. This time your left foot will be planted on the ground. You'll pull your left heel as close to your left butt as possible. Sit nice and tall. Reach both arms up. And then you'll fold forward and reach for your right foot. Maybe you stay here. If you feel a little bit more advanced, we'll go for a bind. It's a lot of shoulder and chest opening. Sweep your arms behind your back, hugging your left knee into your body. Maybe your arms don't touch or push the back of your hands into your body and keep walking your fingers towards each other. If they do, you'll clasp your hands, widen your chest by pulling your shoulder blades onto your back, and then lengthen your spine. So we set up for this in the last couple poses of that spinal length. We're still working that here. And then you can fold forward and bring your face down towards that right knee. I'd work the stretch of the chest, actively flexing your foot. A lot of times I see people flex their foot from their toes. We want the flex coming all the way from the heel. So send your heel away from you and pull the whole foot back towards you rather than kind of like a pointed foot. The whole foot comes to you, lending itself to more length than that Achilles. Take one more inhale, stretch the spine, and then exhale, release. Cross those legs. We've got one more arm balance here. Push into your hands, lift your belly, switch your legs, and then take a seat. Extend the left leg long, flex the foot. Right sole of the foot planted on the ground. Pull your right heel as close to the back of your right thigh as you can. Inhale, stretch your back. Exhale, fold forward, reach, find that length. Maybe you're grabbing here or here, whatever is appropriate for your body. You're hugging your right inner thigh in towards your body so that the knee is not bowing out to the side. And then you'll sweep your arms behind your back. Maybe your hands don't reach and you're pushing your back of your palms into the ground and working your shoulder blades to pull onto your back. If you need a deeper experience, go for the clasp of the hands. Then hug the knee in with your inner thighs and the strength of your right arm. And then lengthen your chest. Try to widen the collarbone, drawing the shoulder blades into the back. And then use your breath to deepen into this pose. Find those inhales to create more length. And the exhales to create more work. Work the pose. Press your left thigh into the ground. Flex your left heel away from you, drawing your toes back. And stretch your upper back forward. Breathing into this. So we'll be here for about 10 more seconds. Stretching out all the hard work you did. Last breath in and out here. And then on your exhale, you'll gently release the bind, release the hands. And we'll bring our legs into Navasana boat pose. Belly button tight, we're balancing on our sits bones. Collarbones are wide. Lift your legs up into a tabletop. Flex your feet, flare your toes, create space in the metatarsals of your feet. Stretch those guys out. Now lift your chest up, find that proud posture. Good. And then maybe you're a little bit more advanced, you wanna lengthen those legs. Good. Finishing our, all of our hard work off here. And zip your inner thighs to touch. Lift your sternum. Plug your arms into their sockets. And we'll be here for our last six. Taking one more breath. Inhale through the nose. And then exhale. Release. Awesome work, guys. Thank you for joining me for Triple Pilates. I hope you got a little bit of everything. I had fun. Definitely got my workout in for the day. I hope you got yours in. And thanks for joining me. I'm Lindsay with Jim Rock.